Bender here with Talk and Tech. We're at DEMA 2023, and I'm here with Matt from Fathom, Fathom Dive Systems. He's going to run us through the uh, Fathom CCR. Yeah, so right here we have our Fathom Mark III and our technical rig configuration. Uh, we are a mechanical needle valve driven CCR unit, um, and our technical configuration is pretty neat because it allows us to carry quite a bit of bailout with us on the dive, which is fantastic for hopping off the of boats, uh, just to have all that diluent on your back and not have to worry about carrying a lot of extra stages. Um, so on the unit we feature back mounted counter lungs uh, which keep our chest nice and clear and allow us to, to manipulate stage bottles and stuff like that very easily. Um, we are have water traps in our, our T pieces as well which would draw out any water that we would get into the unit into the counter lung which allows us to really easily dewater these units which is a you know very important feature for us. Um, our needle valve is something that really makes us unique. <laughs> makes us unique in that it allows us to dial in the flow of oxygen to our metabolic rate. So if I'm going on a task, task changing from scootering, uh, where I'm pretty relaxed and calm and just taking my time through a cave, and then I drop my scooter and start swimming really hard, I can increase the flow of metabolic, uh, increase the flow of oxygen into the unit uh, very, very easily and quickly uh, and allow it to maintain a very stable PO2 without affecting my buoyancy very much. Um, we have our own heads-up display in the unit um, that has a visual alarm feature for PO2s below 0 .4, or 0.4 and above 1.6, um, as well as a four-pin connector, which allows us to use a Nerd or a Shearwater Petrol 3. Uh, Petrol 3 is my personal choice because it allows us to have a vibration feature as well. So now we have two different ways of alerting a diver, one being visual right in your face, and one being a audible as well as vibratory uh, a uh, vibratory um, path. So we are able to use uh, either a five and a half pound or if I remove a spacer from the back of the can a nine pound scrubber uh, which gains us a pretty big amount of time to spend underwater. And that is a radial scrubber? Or radial axle? scrubber so a little bit more efficient we're also on in to out so our gas path goes into the center of the scrubber and gets pulled out to the side. And that's pretty unique to Fathom Dive Systems machines or I don't think we've seen that anywhere else in the industry? Yeah, Peter Reedy was originally doing it uh, back with steam machines and the prisms, uh, and he did quite a bit of testing and found it was slightly more efficient, and so it was something that we wanted to keep uh, for our longer range cave diving that we primarily do. So. Uh, direction of gas flow through the machine? Yeah, we are right to left loop direction, uh, which is a little bit different compared to a lot of other people in the industry, but it's uh, not too uncommon. Um, I guess another thing is we have standardized on using QC six connectors for our, our, our manual ads and our gas edition. What's really nice about that is it allows us to very quickly plug in a gas into the unit and that will feed your diluent map and it will also be the same gas that feeds your BOV. So you're able to do gas switches very similar to how you would an open circuit and plug in the right gas for the dive. Do uh, all Fathom rebreathers come with a BOV or is that an option? That's an option. The Mark III comes standard with a BOV. Um, but on the Gemini, it's an option between the BOV or the DSV. Gotcha. Anything new for 2023, 2024 that's unique? Uh, nothing with the Mark III. We made a couple changes last year, mainly in configuration. We standardized in the BOV, but we were selling most of those anyways, and so it just didn't make sense to keep the option. Uh, and then we also went to a four pin connector, which allows us to send in a handset or a head and not have to send in the entire thing when, so, when you have any issues. So a diver if they have a spare in the team they could they could yes. switch a machine out recalibrate it get yep. right back in the get right back right in the back water in it. it allows you some more options sort of splits the failure between two different components so no other uh, moving parts happy. no solenoids no, no solenoids, widgets no temp no, sticks no temp sticks we've made it as simple as we can and if you take a look at our head uh, you can see there's very little going on up there we've designed it to uh, be as low profile and uh, affect the loop volume as little as possible we're using uh, coaxial style or uh, SMD style uh, cells uh, which allow us to replace the wires with every cell change as well so we're not having any corrosion
corrosion issues occurring okay. within the unit. Very good. So uh, as far as the environment that they're that they excel in or that the, the type of conditions these machines can handle? They uh, can handle just about anything you can throw at them. Um, I've done some quite long ocean dives as well as cave dives on them and uh, it's been my unit of choice since before I worked for the company. So Very, very cool. Uh, depth rating for the machine is this because this is a fixed PO2 or fixed IP. Um, mm -hmm. Do we get to a point where things will balance out and oxygen will stop flowing? We do. So out of the box, we are depth limited to 405 feet with our increased intermediate pressure. Um, you can increase that IP uh, all the way up to 20 bar, and that would bring your depth limit to 600 feet or so, uh, which we don't really view I as think too much most of, a, of us are gonna fold uh, too much of a concern. So. <laughs> Very cool. Well, thank you so much for showing us the machine. Yeah, Have no a great problem. show. Well,